can hardly believe it. It's almost too good to be true. Mother went to the store and she bought me a book full of lots of empty pages I can do things to. If I want to draw a wiener sausage or a picture of a beautiful day or list my favorite colors and foods, anything I want is a-okay. Cause it's my top secret personal bees. I'm a wreck. Just think, there's a whole room of friends just waiting to meet you. Don't you want to meet them? No, thank you. Junie B, I promise, you're going to love first grade. It only seemed like yesterday we were all at kindergarten graduation. That was the time of my life, I tell you. Except I have a feeling this year is going to be a whole new ball of wax. I am very worried. Oh my gosh, it's Lucille, Lucille, my bestest friend from kindergarten last year. Lucille, Lucille, it's me, Junie B, your bestest friend from kindergarten. So glad to see you, friend. Stop it, Junie B, you're wrinkling my new dress. This thing costs a fortune. 
There, good as new. Come on, Lucille, let's go find two desks next to each other. I think we should sit near the door. Want to, huh? If we sit near the door, we can stare at people who walk down the hall. No, Ginny B, I'm going to sit right here. I've already picked it out next to my two new best friends, Camille and Chenille. Twins, twins are twins, Lucille. Come on, Lucille, this is our lucky day. Let's go touch them. Hurry before a line forms. Stop it, Ginny B. Camille and Chenille do not want to be touched. And besides, I'm their new best friend, not you. Yes, but I can be their best friend along with you, right, Lucille? All I have to do is meet them, right? And then we can all be bestest friends together. No, Ginny B, I'm sorry. You and I have already been best friends. Remember, we are best friends for a whole long year. So now it's time for Camille and Chenille to have a turn. It's only fair for me. And besides, their names rhyme with mine. Lucille. Camille. Chenille. Yeah. yeah. See, doesn't that sound marvelous? Lucille. Camille. Chenille. Jody B. Joe! See, it totally throws the rhythm off. There's nothing I can do. Once upon a time, we were friends fabulous. Friends fabulous. Friends fabulous. There were never two friends who were closer than us. Closer than us. Closer than us. But these two came along, and he just like me. And though you're a nice girl, it is plain to see. You're a pretty good friend. everyone Look at those girls walking down the street the sea Who are those girls that you'd like to meet the sea They're faster this year You know what that means they're going to go to the mall and buy the same jeans they'll be on the bus they'll say hey look at us friends. First, I had Lucille. Plus, I also had that Grace. Me and that Grace rolled the school bus together every single day. Only too bad for us, because this year, Grace got put in a different room than me, and that is not even fair. But on the bus, we could sit next to each other, just like we always did. Grace, excuse me, Grace, what kind of shenanigans do you call this, madam? Didn't you see me sitting here? Yes, hi, Junie B. I'm sorry I can't sit with you, but I promised Bobby Jean Piper I'd sit with her today, okay? No, Grace, not okay. You can't sit with Bobby Jean Piper. You and I have to sit together every day because we sat together every day last year, and this year shall be no different. Sit down, please, Junie B. You got yelled at. Grr, 
Grr, Bobby Jean Piper, grr. <laughs> Who's laughing at me during this very terrible crisis? Herb. You said grr. That was a good one. Yeah, only here's the problem, Herbert. Grr isn't actually a joking matter, and I wasn't even talking to you. I know you weren't talking to me. No one on this bus ever talks to me. This is last year I went to a different school, so I don't have any bus friends yet. Well, I used to have a bus friend named Grace, but today I'm dropping her like a hot tomato. You mean potato. Bobby Jean Piper wears a diaper. Sit down, Judy B. Well, maybe I can stay here, just until you get your bus friend back. If you want to sit here, I suppose that that might be all right. If you want to sit here, I suppose that I will be polite. First grade makes you tired, why not sit a while? I will take the window seat and you can have the aisle. Herbert, you're a nice boy and I think that I will have to say. You can be my friend just for today. journal. Okie dokie. Things are a little better, kind of, because I'm getting to know the kids in my class. There's bossy head May. Well, if it isn't you again, Junie Jones. B, B, B. You're always forgetting my B, and that is not acceptable, sister. And Herb... And Lenny, and Jose. Hola. Huh? Whoops. Hola means hello in Spanish, 
and sometimes I forget which one I'm speaking. Wow, Jose, you speak two different languages? You speak two different languages? Cool. Big deal, I know Spanish too. I can count all the way to three. Does anyone want to hear me? No, not me. Me neither. No. no. Mm -mm. Uno. Dos. Tres. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, Mr. Scary. This morning I have a fun assignment for you. I want you to read these words to yourselves, to yourselves, to yourselves. And then, without talking to your neighbor, Herbert, I want you to choose any word from the list and draw a picture of it. Oh, goody, goody, Mr. Scary. I love this kind of assignment. I am perfect at not talking to my neighbor. That's nice, mate. Are we ready, everybody? Okay, go! Starfish clock, no time left to lose. Sun, sky, man, dog, cow, moon, plate and fork and knife and spoon. Better hurry up and see. Time to make it dry. Thirty seconds to go. Catman, hoot, ice cream cone, tick tock, tick tock, tick. Grab a bite, starfish clock. Why do I feel sick? Judy Beef by the friend Mine will be the best in town Shh, children, put your pencils down Time is up for drawing One did. My, my, look at that! Many, Lenny drew a man wearing a coat! Man and coat were both on the board, weren't they? Wait a minute. Cool bat and ball. And Jose, you drew an ice cream cone, didn't you? See, si, me gusta! Yes, I like ice cream. Wait a minute. May, that is a very unusual clock you drew. It has one, two, three, four, five big fingers. That is very unusual. Yes, I drew it myself. Plus, clock was the hardest word up there. I bet I'm the only one who knew the word clock. I bet. Clock? Junie B, don't you want to show me your drawing? Don't you want to get a gold star for today? No, thank you. I don't want a gold star today. Thank you for asking. I'm sorry, Junie, but I really need to see what you drew, just to make sure you understood the assignment. That is a very wonderful picture of a... A screaming chicken, you know? Cluck, cluck, cluck. See, I use capital letters for the cluck. Capital letters are for screaming, correct? Well, yes. But the problem is, cluck was not on the board. Well, what about the butt? Bull? Coot? Ute? thing that could happen to a first grader. It's even worse than an eye patch, because eye patches are kind of cute and piratey, but glasses, I look like a nitwit. Don't be silly, sweetheart. You look absolutely adorable. What if I go to room one tomorrow, and they laugh their heads off at me and think I look like a Goonie bird, and no one wants to be my friend? Junie, there's more to friendship than what you look like. Tell that to Lucille. What? Never mind. It's no use. I'm done for. It's time for show and tell. It's time for show and tell. We give a great big yell. It's time for show and tell. No school year would be complete without it. Your parents in school and talk on town. And tell me what could be more swell. Tell me what could be more swell. Tell me what could be more swell. It's time for show and tell.
Julie B, didn't you bring something to share? No, I changed my mind. What's wrong, Julie B? What did you bring? Huh? Stop whispering, Herb, Junie, Jones. If you don't stop whispering right now, I'm going to tell the teacher. No, you shush, you shushy head may. I wasn't even bothering Herbert. And for your information, I was giving him a hint about my new glasses. And that is none of your beeswax, sister. You got glasses? Look, it's her glasses. Junie Jones got her glasses for show and tell. And ha, they're purple. Junie Jones got purple glasses, and they look really... Cool. Cool, Junie, be purple glasses. Whoa. How do you see through these things? Do you have x-ray vision or something? I don't know, Herbert. Possibly. Wow, Junie B. My eyes could never see out of these things. Your eyes must be very special. Trey, Trey special. It must be cool to see the world through your eyes, Junie B. Jones. Junie B, did you look in the kitchen this morning? No. We got something for you. Just for me? That's right, just for you. For me and not for Ollie? Just for you. Why don't you go ahead and take a look? Today, Junie B. Jones. Me too. Everyone's buying today, Junie. I wasn't actually expecting this development. We're the only ones who didn't buy hoagies today. Yes, Sheldon, I know that. Hoagies are very popular, but I'm not allowed to eat them. I'm allergic to fake meat and cheese. Please wipe your nose. I'm only allowed to eat food that comes from nature. Also, I'm allergic to dairy. Slow and I mean it! <laughs> Herb, hey Herb, is that a cookie I see? Yeah? Why? I didn't get a cookie at all today. My mother packed me a fruit bar instead. Fruit bars are good too? Yes, Herbert, I know fruit bars are good. But I really wanted a cookie today, and so I wish that you would just share that thing with me and that's all. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you! Yum! That tastes just like the cookies Mrs. Gutsman used to bring to our afternoon kindergarten. Who's Mrs. Gutsman? Who's Mrs. Gutsman? Who's Mrs. Gutsman? Queen of Snacks! Oh, oh, it is a gem, I tell you. <laughs> Who's the one who'll make sure napkins are folded? Who's the one who'll see the bread hasn't molded? The sponge up all the counters to everything is gleaming. Who'll make sure that your cream of wheat is extra? Who's the one? 
Pine Hill, so chalk a milk flowing. Anchors well versed in all nutritional facts. The Jewish story and Dorfman is a fabulous Gladys Gutsman. Gladys Gutsman, Queen of Snacks. And when she makes a PB and J, she always. Lactose intolerant, she'll substitute the cheese. Ah. She's sweet as her, she's zero. She's patient and she's kind. It's plain to see her heart is just as big as her behind. <gasps> That's a compliment. <gasps> I don't believe it. Here she comes now. to see you too. Hey, now that you found me, when can you bring the cookies to our classroom, Gladys? Don't call me Gladys, dear, and first graders don't get cookies like kindergartners do. First graders get cookies when they buy them with their school lunches. Yeah, well, what about the children who bring their lunches? Where's our cookies, huh? Because today everybody got a cookie except for me and Sheldon. And so pardon mm. me for asking, but what are kids like me supposed to do? Hmm, how would you, Junie B. Jones, like to help me in the kitchen? You mean like be the boss of lunch? <laughs> well, almost. Let's make sure it's okay with your teacher, and then we'll send a permission slip home to your parents. Really? Really. So, your job today is to be our lunch greeter. Do you know what a lunch greeter is? A lunch greeter smiles and says, <clears throat> My name is Judy B. Jones, and today on our menu, we are proud to present tuna noodle casserole. Do you think you could do that? I don't know. Maybe I could. Lovely, because here come the children now. Hello, Clarence, somebody or other elementary school kids. My name is Junie B. Jones, and on today's menu, we are proud to present tuna, noodle, oh, stinkle. Oh, what the heck is that smell? What you're smelling is our lunch today, Junie B. Well, all I can say is pew. That smell is not delightful. I'm lucky I brought my lunch today, aren't I? And I don't have to eat that pew stinkle like the other kids. <laughs> Judy B. Jones. Yes, ma'am. I know. My work is done here.
first grade journal. Room one is still mad at me. After we went back to the classroom, Mrs. Gutsman brought bologna sandwiches for the children who did not eat. They were not a hit. Now Herbert is my only friend. Also, Sheldon and Jose are being reasonable. I just wish lunchtime never happened. Why, hello, Mrs. Gutsman. Mrs. Gutsman, Mrs. Gutsman, Junie Jones is trying to hide from you, but I am keeping track of her movements. Junie B, why are you sitting on the floor? I brought a little something for your class today. Don't you want to see it? No, I don't want to see it. And so you can be on your way now, please. I brought a little something for your class today, and I need someone to help me pass it out. There are lots of people to help you. But I need someone with experience. <sighs> All right, but some of these children are still very mad at me, you know? I think I could fix that. Sugar cookies? Sugar cookies. Sugar cookies! Thank you, Mrs. Gutsman! Thank you! Don't thank me, class. Junie B. Jones is the one who reminded me to pay you a visit this year. She's the one you need to thank. Thank you, Junie B. Jones. Ready to go, Hopper? Ready to go! It's a wonderful feeling. The lessons that I've learned here at school. Though I may not be the boss of lunch, but the boss of sugar cookies is Here. Well, at first I was practicing my kicking, and then my ball went over the fence. Then what was I supposed to do? Kick air? But good news, because just then I saw your cow can, and so I ran at him with all my might and kicked him as hard as I could. Only too bad for me, because that dumb thing was filled with water, and now I have a smashed piggy toe. The end. Gee, a watering can had water in it? How unusual. Who's kidding who, Mother? All is lost, everything is hopeless, and you can't fix it. Tell you what, we'll put some ice on it and then I'll make you a special shoe that you can wear to school and as long as you stay off of it, you should be good as new in no time. But the kickball tournament is Friday! I know. I know you're disappointed about not being able to play in the kickball tournament, but there's lots of other things that you could do. No, Mom, that's not okay! Not okay, I mean... <laughs> okay! <laughs>
horseshoe mother made for me with a piggy toe window in it. And so everyone keeps trying to get a look at that thing. Sheldon stretched his neck out way too far, fell off his chair, and he had to go to the nurse. It is not a good day for either of us. No one touch this, please. Even though I came back to class today, I'm still not totally right up here. <laughs> Yes, Sheldon, I am very aware of that. I probably shouldn't play in the kickball tournament on Friday either. Don't worry, we can find something for you to do. And Junie B, we can find something for you to do too. Who cares about kicking a stupid ball anyways? I'm going to be the head cheerleader. Who wants to be a stupid old cheerleader? I'm going to be crowd control, because I already have a badge at home, and all I need is a big stick to poke people with. And a gas mask. I hope that won't be necessary, May. I already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a halftime show. A halftime show? Yes. Yes, yes, because my daddy used to play in his high school band, and he already taught me how to march and play the cymbals like a real professional band guy. <laughs> Words. That sounds like a great idea. And speaking of ideas, Junie B, what do you think? Would you like to be in the halftime show with Sheldon too? Gee, I don't know, Mr. Scary. My daddy has a woodblock you can borrow. Or a tuba. That is not what I had planned. Junie B, are you ready for dinner? Grrr! I know you're disappointed about not being able to play in the halftime show, but there's lots of other things that you can do. I hate that dumb tournament. I hate it. Please don't say hey, Junie B. <sighs> but I was going to be the star of the whole thing. Oh, honey, no one could be the star all the time. But there was going to be cheering and clapping, and none of that cheering and clapping would be for me. And I hate that. I hate it. I hate it. You are getting very close to a timeout, Junie B. I hate timeouts. And so... So I will stop that behavior this instant, Missy. <laughs> Listen, I know it's no fun that you can't play in the halftime show, but when life gives you lemons, you need to learn to make lemonade. Yeah, what's lemonade got to do with this? It's a saying, Junie. When life gets a little sour, you need to learn to sweeten it up a bit. Yeah, right. When the road of life hits some boulders and bumps, dear, the strain and strife can leave you down in the dumps. But I got some advice that in my noggin has stayed. When life gives you lemons, just make lemonade. You think your time is through and you won't be a star. Never take for granted just how special you are. Stardom isn't over, just don't let it take When life gives you lemons, just make lemonade. 
see these lemons inside my hand. Old and sour, no fun at all. with me. I just love the sound of a good woodblock, don't you? Tap, tap, tap. Great tournament, huh, guys? I haven't really been watching, Herbert. And I didn't learn how to juggle in time for the show. It'll be great. I know it. Herbert is my friend. And while I'm pretty sure I'm going to marry him, he just doesn't get it. <laughs> ah! Mommy! Mommy! I'm doomed. Kickball Tournament Halftime Show! <laughs> Roses are red, my outfit is pink, here comes the halftime show, I think. <laughs> Shuni B. Jones and Sheldon Potts, last one out here is an egg that rots. Jones? Aww. Boring. Okay, people, 
for your listening enjoyment, I'm now going to sing a very special song from the hit musical, Annie. <laughs> Excuse me while I yawn. Ooh. Hey, are you people throwing food at me? At me, Junie B? Well, let me tell you something. Maybe I can't be the star of the kickball tournament, but is that gonna get the best of me, Junie B. Jones? No siree, Bob. So go ahead and throw your flaky biscuits because I will take those dumb biscuits and I will, I will. I did it, Daddy. I tossed them in the air just like you taught me. Oh, honey, we're so proud of you. Because I finally caught those things? No, because you practice and practice and never gave up. Do you know what that makes you? Tired? No, silly. That makes you a star. A star? A superstar. First grade journal. Oh no, there's no more room. I've come to the last page of my journal. Does that mean that all my fun and adventures are over? What will I do now? What's wrong, Junie B? I'm sorry, Herbert. It is too very sad to talk about. Okay, if you insist. There are no more pages left in my top secret personal beeswax journal. Do you know what that means, Herbert? No, what? It means that all my fun and adventures are at their end. And that is depressing and glum, I tell you. But Herbert, what about your own adventures? There's no adventures without you, Junie B. Jones. Oh, Herbert. Are you coming? I'll be right there. I had no idea what the future would bring, but I had some adventures. 